All right, in this video, we will review how to factor a polynomial by grouping. Now, it doesn't tell us that we need to factor by grouping, um, but we have four terms, and uh, 50 divided by 25 is 2. Um, and here we have negative 2 divided by negative 1, which is also 2. So grouping is going to work. Um, you could also go to your calculator and type this in and find a 0 and factor that way. But to me, it would be a lot easier just to do grouping. So the GCF here is 25x squared. All right, so that's going to leave behind x plus 2. So I'm really hoping I'm going to have an x plus 2 over here as well. Let's see if I'm that lucky. So see that negative 1? I'm going to bring that negative 1 right out. Now if I do the distributive property, negative 1 times x is negative x. Negative 1 times positive 2 is negative 2. So it does make sense. Um, now, because I have these parentheses the same, the x plus 2 is a GCF itself. So I will, again, pull out the GCF in this way. Um, if I take away the x plus 2, that leaves behind the blue. 25x squared minus 1. Um, then it's just a matter of knowing not to stop here. Because 25x squared minus 1 is the difference of two squares. It is further factorable. So I must keep going and factor this more. 25x squared factors as 5x plus 1 times 5x minus 1. All right, and of course, we will just bring down the x plus 2. So this is now factored completely. And I did it by grouping. Um, just briefly, I'll show you the other way that you could have done it. If I put this into the table feature of my TI-30 XS multi-view, um, I would have started from negative 10 like I always do. And I'm scrolling down looking for a 0 on the y side. So I found a 0 here at negative 2. Um, so that tells me that I could start my synthetic division um, with that negative 2. So I've got negative 2, and I've got 25, and 50, and negative 1, and negative 2. I could bring down the 25. 25 times negative 2 is negative 50. That makes 0. 0 times negative 2 is 0. That makes negative 1. Negative 1 times negative 2 is positive 2. So that made 0. OK. Now, as soon as I found a 0 of um, negative 2, that means I had a factor of x plus 2. Okay, so I could just bring that right down. Now, putting the uh, variables back into this 25 minus 1 situation, um, then this is 25x squared. Ignore the 0. That would be the x term. And then minus 1. Okay, so then I would have factored it some more, again, recognizing that this is the difference of two squares. 5x plus 1. 5x minus 1, and I would have kept the x plus 2. So that's a second way I could have done it. All right, if you don't like grouping, then you could have um, done it this way as well. 